When you think of pirates, what do you think of? For me, it's Captain Jack Sparrow, hands down. For you, it could be this guy, I don't know, but there's no doubt that Jack is an iconic character. But what is it that makes Jack so memorable? And can the franchise survive without him? It all started in 2001 when Disney had officially run out of ideas. The solution? Make movies out of theme park rides. The only problem was that the rides didn't exactly have character development or a story. But that didn't matter to Disney, so they started the first draft of Pirates of the Caribbean. And it only made sense to hire Jeopardy! champion and game show producer Jay Wolpert. I guess he really liked pirates? The script was rejected by producer Jerry Bruckheimer for being a straight pirates movie. I guess Walpert liked pirates too much. But not long after, Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio were brought on to write the final version of the script. Their previous work included classics like Aladdin and Shrek and Treasure Planet. Which I remember being great by the way, why didn't anybody watch it? Anyway. They added the cursed gold to the plot to give the movie a more supernatural twist. But most importantly, their version of the script introduced the man himself, Captain Jack Sparrow. With director Gore Verbinski joining the project in 2002, they began the search for Captain Jack. They needed someone that could bring a unique energy to the role. The only problem is that they didn't really know what they wanted. The role was written for Hugh Jackman, but Disney thought he wasn't famous enough to take the role. They were like, X-Men? Wolverine? Nobody's gonna care about that in 20 years. They also wanted Christopher Walken, who is obviously very different from Hugh Jackman. No. What? I said no. Why not? I don't want to. They seem to be going for an older, more experienced Jack. More in line with classic pirate films from before color existed. Michael Keaton was also an option, but that didn't work out either. You wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. They asked Robert De Niro, but he was like, meh. And he thought nobody would watch it. <laughs> there was also Matthew McConaughey. Can you imagine him in the role? All right, all right, all right. The only one in consideration that even came close to the Captain Jack energy that we know was Jim Carrey. But his schedule with Bruce Almighty conflicted with pirates. They all could have done fine, but I don't think that they would have brought the extra thought and detail that Johnny Depp added to this character. And then something terrible happened. Something that could have prevented Jack and the Pirates movies from ever hitting screens. The Country Bears was released. Yeah. Now, you might be thinking, how could this movie have anything to do with Pirates? Well, it was based on a Disney ride, and Hollywood executives are kind of, oh, what's the word? Stupid. They almost canceled Pirates of the Caribbean because this bear movie did badly. Oh, people hate when we turn rides into movies. Ooh. It looked like the movie was cursed. But then, Gore Verbinski emerged from the darkness of the Disney boardroom and showed the execs exactly why they were wrong. The concept art and the scripts were so good, even the executives knew that there was potential here. And Pirates of the Caribbean lived to see another day. Now while all this was happening, Johnny was enjoying the success of hit movies like Chocolat, which I assume by the poster was all about a man dealing with crippling chocolate addiction. One summer morning, Johnny Depp was enjoying his weekly visit to the sauna. He sat there, reading over the script his agent sent him, trying his best to imagine what Jack could be. He knew the character was incomplete. There was simply something missing. The problem stuck in his mind. A question ruminating over and over. Who is Captain Jack Sparrow? Through the heat, Depp finally discovered the final piece of the puzzle. The heat was very important for me. You know, the, the idea of, yeah, sweltering heat and the heat that we put into our own brain just from obsessing or thinking, you know. He may also have been high, I'm not sure. From there, Depp had an endless supply of surprising details to add to the character. Anyone who sees Jack immediately knows he's a pirate. That's got to be the best pirate I've ever seen. But he's not just any pirate. He's Captain, Captain Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. The hat, the dreadlocks, the sword. It all fits together. And Depp played a huge role in creating Jack's look. He decided on the eyeliner, the beads, and the trinkets. All of it was inspired by the rock musician Keith Richards. Depp always wanted to be a musician before acting, so this was a way for him to add some of his own personality. But his influence went much deeper than the look. Jack looks like he's drunk. And he is a lot, but not always. 
Depp learned that people who travel at sea for long periods grow so used to rocking on the ship that it's hard for them to balance on solid land. So Jack always has this sway as he walks. Having a unique walk makes him stand out from all the other characters. Johnny Depp also improvised on set. He knew the script wasn't entirely written for his version of the character, so he created new lines on the spot, including some of the most quotable lines. Like here, the script only had Jack complaining about the burning island, but Depp knew that wouldn't be Jack's main concern. But why is the rum gone? Depp added details that all fit together to make Jack a character that only he could play. But he was almost fired. Twice. The first time came during the development of Curse of the Black Pearl. While filming the movie, Disney was not happy. They didn't have a clue what Depp was trying to do with the character. Michael Eisner, the head of Disney at the time, literally said, He's ruining the movie. Action. Other people at Disney thought Jack was some kind of weird simpleton or a drunk. One executive's only comment was, Gay! Uh, Disney was a very different place back then. But Depp and Verbinski and the crew, they just couldn't cave in to Disney. They said screw you to the mouse house and embrace their pirate vision. It's said that they made this decision after a long psychedelic sauna visit. From there it seemed like smooth sailing. Curse of the Black Pearl was a hit and they moved straight to Dead Man's Chest and At World's End. Despite some negative critical scores, the franchise made a ton of money. So when Gore Verbinski ended his trilogy and wrapped up the story, Disney would not quit. They needed to make more. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, but they actually made a fourth and fifth movie. But uh, that's a video for another day. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the second time that Depp was almost fired. Well, this time it could be permanent. 2018. Drama. Suddenly Johnny Depp was painted as a public menace. Pirate 6 was pulled from production, and that seemed to be the end of Pirates of the Caribbean. But you know what Hollywood loves to make? Sequels. You know what else they like? Spin-offs. And if they're feeling especially goofy, they'll make a prequel or even a reboot. If Disney couldn't have this Captain Jack, they were just gonna make a new one. They started off by developing two Pirates movies without Jack. The first was developed with Barbie herself, Margot Robbie. This was around the time of Birds of Prey and the fantabulous girl boss diaries of Harley Quinn. And the first red flag was Birds of Prey's main weakness, emulating other characters. Captain Jack was definitely an influence on the Harley Quinn character. But the worst of it was copying off of Deadpool. And with the directors of Birds of Prey and the writers of Deadpool on board for this Pirates movie, the pieces were all in place for a real just uninspired content slop of a movie. <laughs> then there was a trial, yada yada yada, Johnny Depp's name is cleared. But here we are in 2023 and they're developing a different script with a quote, younger cast. They have one of the original writers of the Pirates movies and they also have the showrunner of The Last of Us show, so it looks good on paper. Problem with all these scripts is that they all assume they can succeed as a Pirates movie without Captain Jack. Just like Star Wars, Disney just wants to keep the cash cow going, make the franchise live way beyond the original cast. But I feel like even if they bring back Captain Jack, they're just gonna set up more and more Pirates movies without him, and it's just gonna get really boring and bland like Star Somehow Wars Palpatine did. And all the while, Disney's gonna be like, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, man, we could do this forever, bro. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, with Johnny's name cleared, maybe they bring him back. Because I really want to see one last really good Pirates movie that definitively ends this story. Even though I don't really know what the story is. I think Davy Jones was in a dream or something. This has been my unhinged rant about Captain Jack being irreplaceable. Uh, I had one video blow up. I promise I'm not exclusively a Pirates of the Caribbean channel, but we will be producing exclusively Pirates content for the foreseeable future. Uh...